the street lights around me in the wall to wall prison of my city flickering dirty neon over alleys mean and dirty streets while my neighborhood is torn down around me to hello everybody from that nightclub at the end of the world this is uh, Michael C. Rupert, Tracker of Truth, back with you on the 13th of April in the year 2014. We made it this far. Carolyn Baker joining us tonight. She'll be on here in just a second to join us, and we've got some important work to do tonight. Uh, as we uh, <clears throat> open the show, nearly 2.5 million residents of the city of Lanzhou, uh, a provincial capital in western China, have been ordered not to drink <clears throat> its tap water, the tap water after the supply was contaminated. Uh, with dangerous levels of uh, carcinogenic substance. Um, the panic buying of, of water ensued, and the toxic sub that's because the toxic sub substance was benzene. <clears throat> and according to the U.S. government, uh, which has little or no credibility, but we know that, uh, that the science is good, consuming foods or fluids, fluids contaminated with high levels of benzene can cause vomiting, stomach irritation, dizziness, sleepiness, convulsions, and rapid heart rate. In extreme cases, inhaling or swallowing very high levels of benzene can be deadly. The website at the American Cancer Society warns it. Well, it was the American Cancer Society. Same thing, the banks and the governments, but uh, <clears throat> benzene is not good. That Picture two and a half million people uh, whose uh, water supply is, is, is fouled. The situation is getting worse uh, by the day, and it's, it, it's too, too big to ignore. Uh, I'm going to bring... Carolyn, on uh, quickly, and then I'm going to give you a report of my recent trip to Seattle this week. Uh, Carolyn Baker, you know, she co-hosts this show. We all love her. She is out there uh, uh, doing amazing work and very, very busy. She was a psychotherapist for 17 years. She taught psychology and history. Uh, she's a Ph.D. She manages a Speaking Truth to Power. Her website's at carolynbaker.net author of five books, um, Sacred Demise, Walking the Spiritual Path of Industrial Civilizations, Collapse, one of my favorites. Her newest book, Navigating Becoming Chaos, a handbook for, for uh, inner, oops, I cut it off. I think it's inner, <laughs> inner transformation. I think it's, she'll tell us. We all know her and love her, and it was, it was as a result of a conversation I had with her this week and some follow-up with some other people who we all recognize as being way out front uh, on the issue of raising, changing, penetrating uh, human consciousness. And we've all been getting our asses kicked. That's just the bottom line to it. So, Carolyn, uh, welcome back to the show. We're, we're going to talk about important stuff tonight. And I, I want to start off by, by giving a report of my trip to uh, Seattle this week. Sounds um, good. I had mentioned on Facebook that, uh, that it was for mainstream TV, and it is, uh, which, was, which is kind of amazing, because finally... Uh, but the beautiful part about it is, is that I was, it was made expressly clear to me that they wanted Mike Rupert unplugged. They wanted everything that I said, not, no sugarcoating of anything, and that's what they got. Now, now what's going to happen is uh, nobody will, uh, almost nobody will see what was filmed in Seattle this week because it was for a uh, production company in Los Angeles, a great group of people. I can't mention names now, and I have to walk fine lines around the contract to shoot an eight-minute promo reel at the request of one of the major network cable uh, uh, outfits uh, as a pitch, if you will, for a series or for a two-hour special. And it was, uh, it, it was a daunting experience. Um, I went up to, uh, uh, flew up to Seattle on Monday. I'm in this little trailer, and a, and a town car picked me up, took me to Santa Rosa Airport. I flew from there to Seattle. And I was in, I was in the Matrix. That's what it was. I was in the Matrix. And uh, get picked up by the, the crew. We go out to uh, a Marriott Hotel up in Redmond uh, where we spent two days. And it was, it was uh, shocking to, to just, just to be in that energy. TV screens all around with Fox News and CNN and all these business people, you know, engaged in their business. But I noticed that everyone was kind of looking like they were just going through the motions of what they do in their life, and that, that, that perception was, was affirmed later on in the trip. 
We shot uh, uh, Tuesday for about five, six hours. That was just me. Uh, on Wednesday, I got to interview a wonderful man, Dr. John Apsley. met his wife, Linda, at their home. Uh, John is an, an MD and a chiropractor and a uh, holistic uh, practitioner who is working with the lawyers for the sailors from the USS Ronald Reagan, and he does have ways that radiation can be pulled out of the body once it's in there, but he's a wonderful human being. That was a trip, uh, but it was very hard uh, staying in Redmond, uh, driving a block from the hotel, and, you know, with somebody else was driving, and seeing Lamborghini dealers, and all, all the lawns looked uh, round up ready, and the flowers even looked like they'd been tweaked. Um, but the energy was that way also. But the hardest part, and I called Carolyn uh, during this trip, because I have been having, uh, as things get worse, I have been having uh, very painful experiences where when I wake up every morning, my head is awake 20 minutes before I am, and it's sitting there at the foot of my bed waiting for me like a vulture. Uh, and I called Carolyn up, and uh, I'll let her say what, what, what she told me, but she validated deeply uh, my experience. Um, the last night before I came home, uh, we moved to a, a small Marriott right next to Seattle Airport, and the energy, the, the matrix energy was so intense, it was like I was drowning. And on uh, Thursday morning when I woke up, uh, I had made a lot of time to kill before the airplane took off, I went down for breakfast, and uh, you go into the breakfast room, and there's three TV screens, and one TV screen is blaring 22 children stabbed at a school, and another one is blaring uh, hit-and-run driver plows through daycare, and another one is talking about that the damn missing airliner, and I hope everybody forgets about it. Uh, and and it was it was it was horrendous. It was almost impossible to breathe. Now, I've gone through this whole trip, and I and I had never compromised once. I, you know, I was uh, being aware of myself, and I took myself into that, and I brought myself out. But then I had to go to the Seattle airport and sit for about three hours before my flight back to Santa Rosa took off. And I didn't see a smile anywhere. It's a huge airport. Nobody was smiling. Everybody looked gray. They looked dead. They looked like robots. They were going through motions. And the energy, and, and, and my perception was, because I am pretty uh, empathetic and, and sympathetic to this, that was that the reality of the collapse of human industrial civilization or the reality of their reality is, is disintegrating in front of everybody. Uh, I did not hesitate at all to bring up climate change and uh, global warming. And uh, not once, every time I brought it up, everybody said, oh, yeah, we get it, you know, and how much they get, I don't know, but nobody denied it. So, Carolyn, I called you, and I right. said, holy cow, I'm, this is crazy, I'm, I'm, my head's spinning, and I told you what was going on with me, and what did you tell me? Well, you told me that you were terrified and uh, that you wake up terrified a lot, and I said, well, I wake, ter wake up terrified a lot, too. Um, I think it's to be expected for what we're experiencing right now as human beings on the planet, and uh, I can only imagine how the other species on the planet wake up every morning. But what I do, I told you what I do is um, the minute I wake up and I start feeling that terror, <clears throat> I start going into gratitude, you know, what I'm thankful for today, that I've got my life, I've got my work, I've got my friends, and on and on and on. And then I do my meditation practice. And, you know, I've got some tools that I use that are very helpful uh, that I shared with you. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is to be expected. Yeah, so I'm... I'm uh, I'm uh, cruising through this week, and I, I get back to my trailer and... Uh, uh, hook up with Jesse Ray and her son River who just left to go up to Oregon yesterday and I miss him already and uh, and I started to breathe a little bit easier but then I've become a you know I've just been listening to friends and and uh, there was an amazing post by Mimi German of Radcast who has been a guest on the show twice also and she's standing by and Mimi's post was was I, I guess one of defiance, but it was also one that had some incredible uh, insight in it. In that she said the dark ones have 
run a con. They've tried to conceal themselves in light, and it's fooling some people. And Mimi is a great warrior. So Mimi was aware of this also. Mimi, are you there? And welcome back to the show. I am, and I'm right here, and I am so glad to be talking with both of you and to all of the listeners out there right now. What a what a time we're in. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, what was what was the essence of your insight? We know the issue is about paying many hundreds of dollars to send uh, water from your local ocean to get it tested in what what I consider to be a, a, a con game. But beyond that, your your perception was much deeper about hypnosis. M- Mimi, tell us about that. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about how some of our our people who got in touch with me to try to tell me to stop talking about this. I was thinking, why would they? try to have me stop talking about this in thinking that the games that are being played right now are positive games for all of us, meaning that they'll have a positive outcome. And I'm thinking these won't have a positive outcome. They're a farce. They're not a a realistic thing. They're um, like a dream state, you know. And I started to think more about it and realized that, to me, we are in, many of us are in an incredibly hypnotic state right now. And the thing that created the hypnosis, what we would call the therapist, the therapist is who I call the con. And the con is the great hypnotherapist. And the con is made up of, let's just say, BP, nuclear madness, fracking, the climate crisis, TV, corporate media, keep going, right? right. And all of that is the familiar. And the familiar is the con. And the longer that we stay in the familiar realm, the longer the con has its platform to continue the board game called the con. Mm-hmm. And we become the pieces on that board game because we live in the familiar rather than delve into what can be. All right, let me, and, l- let me inject there. We're going to continue with this. But I wanted to ask Carolyn, if there's, a, if there's a way to recognize when the meme or mother culture is working on you. Yeah, so, I think you can feel it in your body. Um, and the more you study the alternative culture, the more you experience real community, and, and, and especially when you begin to experience real emotion and not push it away, um, then you're really much more in touch with what's real and what's not real, and you begin to recognize that and feel the discomfort in your body when you are around those memes or when they come in. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. Mimi, go ahead with where you were. Well, you know, back to the, this is the same thing. What what Carolyn was just saying to me is that is the separation from the familiar into the self. Mm-hmm. And that's what where I think we need to remember that we have to get back to. You yes. know, we have to get back to, like they said in the Woodstock song, you know, we got to get back home. And home is into the individual at this point because we've become so much a part of groupthink and group uh, group thought. Nothing is individualized. There is no, there is no individual thought. So whatever they say, the capital they or the con says, we will do, and they'll convince us in any way they can, which is very easy for them at this point. Do what it is they want. And the perfect example for this right now is this whole Ken Busler thing. Um, that you had started talking about. And I don't want to get into that on your show right now, other than to say that people will come into our reality and tell us that they're going to give us something as an example. I'm going to give you what you need, and you're going to love what I give you because you need this, and I know how much you need this, and this is how they speak to us. So what you're going to do is you're going to do something totally absurd, but you're not going to know that it's completely absurd because I've already hypnotized you. You're going to send me water from the Pacific all the way to the East Coast, five gallons of it, and I'm going to test that for you and give you the results. But in order to do that, you're also going to give me $600. You could be buying a meter for yourself to actually learn how to see these things all on your own, but don't do that. Give me your money. And, again, this is just an example. Give me your money, and I'll do it for you. I'll let you know what's going on. And and this is going on while the same source is telling you out loud in every single article that this source is in that they do not believe that low levels of radiation in this instance, this is what it's about, radiation, 
They do not even believe that low levels of radiation can harm you, and yet you're giving them water to test for you, and you're giving them your money to test for you. This is absurd to me. Right. But it's an example of how the con is working. We've been so okay. hypnotized in group let speak. Me, uh, let me toss this back to Carolyn because I'm very familiar with, uh, of course, with Terrence McKenna's work and so many great people's work. Rian Eisler, Dan Quinn. We, it, it, this is the whole concept of authority, and Terrence McKenna's singular point, one of his most powerful, was there is no other authority but your own experience. Carolyn, right. take that for a second and run with it. Well, um, I don't know that I can say anything more than Mimi has said about the, the core, the inner core, and that the more we are in touch with the inner core, and this is what all of my work is about, the more in, we are in touch with the greater self inside of ourselves, the more grounded we are, um, the more sense of clear direction we have and the less susceptible we are to these cons, uh, to these memes that would hypnotize us and, you know, make us fall into the lockstep of the culture. Okay. Um, we'll keep Mimi on here just for a few more minutes. Then we want to get to calls. I want to open the lines tonight because what, what happened for me as I was going through this uh, this week, and then I talked to Carolyn, and I saw Mimi, I started checking around with a number of people who, whose names we all know, many of whom have been guests on this show, and all of them said, man, it's getting, it's getting harder, it's getting tougher. So everybody acknowledged, and I, and I went out, out of my way to make a point, because when I talked to Carolyn, it was a lifesaver for me to recognize, to understand that someone else understood exactly what I was going through, and felt the same way. That makes us stronger together, Mimi as well. Um, and the whole purpose of the show tonight is, first of all, for, for us who are, we who are, you know, we're out there, uh, to share with all of, all of everybody else who's listening the fact that, yeah, if you're having a hard time, uh, that's probably the way it should be, and it is for all of us. Uh, Mimi, how, how, do, how do you care for yourself when... Uh, when when this real darkness comes uh you know in a few ways um sometimes i just sort of uh check out from everything online because it it's noise to me when i get to feeling that way the online chatter becomes noise and i can't handle it i can't handle any noise at all so i need quiet so i meditate um i'll i'll, I'll just find quiet Sometimes I have to reach out to the people I trust the most. And like you, Michael, I'll call you and say, I just need to, I just need to know that you're there and that we are on this island together because someone who I thought was on this island, I realize isn't on this island. <laughs> it kind of freaks me out, you know, that it cha the changes are coming so quickly and the hypnosis is happening so vastly that I feel more and more and more alone. But I remember what's to come. I remember where I'm going after all of this. And I don't mean death. I mean whatever that is that is next and i i actually look forward to that i don't look forward to people suffering in the now i don't i you know that's the thing that eats me up yes but i right. do look forward to the next place that we can all get to together if we can wake up or at least those of us who are awake can you know we'll see what happens yeah okay that's what i think about right excellent uh, Mimi, I want to thank you so much for calling in. Uh, you, you, you set an example by your leadership, by your walk, and uh, I wanted your voice in here tonight. Uh, I'm going to let you go, then Carol and I are going to take it for a few minutes, and then we're going to play a song, but the lines will be open after we play a song, 888-874-4888. 888-874-4888 to talk to me or Carolyn Baker. Uh, I'm hoping a lot of the Facebook stalwarts will call in tonight so that we can hear from each other as a family, and let's see what we can do to make each other feel better. And Mimi, thank you, thank Mimi. you so much thank for you. calling. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Michael. I'll be listening on this end. Great. God bless. Okay, uh, Carolyn, so I think we've kind of set, set the stage here. Yeah, we sort of have. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and, uh, you know, I remember years ago uh, from my uh, my 21 years in 12-step how powerful it was for me to see an old-timer who I thought had it down confess to being, you know, miserable, screwed up, and to share with me uh, a newcomer 
uh, his experience, his or her experience, strength, and hope, uh, because it, it, it just showed me that it could be done. Uh, and I think that's the approach we want to take tonight. Um, uh, you got anything you want to say before? I, I think I got a really good song tonight, but you got anything else you want to add to that? Um, not to that. I was just thinking, uh, as Mimi was talking about this trance and this meme stuff, uh, I was thinking about one of the next trances that uh, is going to be laid on us, and it's already starting big time, is the trance of we absolutely must have geoengineering. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, I'm just I'm just noticing that, and uh, it's something that I think we really need to be aware of um, because the powers that be know how serious the climate situation is, mm-hmm. and they are now desperate enough that they're almost demanding geoengineering. So I just think we have to be very aware of that. Yeah, and and, and it's extremely difficult to watch this madness. I think Mimi made a point, but I have also that that uh, the forces of darkness are, uh, uh, if you will, pulling out all the stops. The old meme, the old culture right. is uh, pulling out all the stops because it is in its death throes. Yes. Uh, and it, it is determined because it doesn't have the power of life to exercise the power of death. And barring a, a, uh, a, a miraculous awakening, um, it, you know, we, be, we, we must be more worried that they're going to get their way. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but as I have been saying all along, this is also about a birth. Yes. Uh, and and this is part of the great the greatest stuff that carries us forward, even as hard as this, this gets. So I picked a song tonight, and I wanted to dedicate it to all the people who have been out here doing the work. And I'm not going to be able to name all of them, but I want to dedicate it uh, to the brave souls who have been out here who are out here now, uh, and and also to everyone who has been so loyal to this show and who has walked the walk all of this way to these very painful times. So I'm I'm, uh, dedicating uh, this song to Carolyn Baker, to Guy McPherson, to Paul Beckwith, to Mimi Gurman, to Derek Jensen, to Rian Eisler, Terrence McKenna, Daniel Quinn, Chris Hedges, Abby Martin. There's a long list. We all know who they are. And I also want to dedicate this song to my indigenous teachers and friends, Christopher Long, Crazy Horse, Skip Mayhawk, Lame Deer, Jesse Ray, Ali Maverick Thomas, Grandma Coco, Rylan McIntyre, Chokwosh, Steve Blue Horse, Gagwila Cook, Sal Jen Corelli, Dale Castile of the Cherokee people, and Cody Golden Elk of the Blue Clan of the Cherokee people. Um, these are people who I hold in my heart as we play this song. And also, I dedicate it to each and every one of you who hears this show tonight because we have so many heroes. This is, a, uh, uh, this is one of my favorites. The song is Calling All Angels by Jane Sibbery and Katie Lang. Let's, let's hold all of ourselves in the heart as we listen. There, what a song. We played that on this show before. It, uh, it seemed to be very appropriate tonight. We haven't got any callers yet. I think we will. If you want to talk to Carolyn, uh, step up, uh, guys, and call in. Uh, share yourself with us. Let us be in this together. Uh, Carolyn, while we're waiting for a call, the, the number is 1-888-874-4888. 888-874-4888. Carolyn, while we're doing that, tell us what's new with you and what you've just done uh, recently, please. Well, thanks for the opportunity to share that. Um, I spent the day today with Andrew Harvey, who many of you know, um, a fabulous teacher and uh, spiritual director, Rumi scholar, former professor at Oxford. Um, He's uh, the founder of the Institute for Sacred Activism. And we made a new videotape. We hadn't made one for about three years, and we made a new one today on near-term extinction. And we had a wonderful conversation. Uh, The first thing we talked about was the evidence for near-term extinction and then how we deal with it, how it awakens us. And finally, we talked about sacred relationship. And uh, we talked about my new book, which is coming out in 2015, Love in the Age of Ecological Apocalypse, The Relationships We Need to Thrive, Um, and how important it is to really work on our relationships at this time. Um, I mentioned in the tape the importance of the of the 12-step 
program approach of taking a searching and fearless moral inventory, especially as we are in this hospice situation, to look back at past relationships, make amends to people we need to make amends to, look at beautiful and precious relationships in our lives and look at how we can recreate those in the time we have left and how we can devote our lives to service. Um, when this videotape is ready, well, I'll, I'll be blasting it everywhere, and people are going to find it extremely inspiring, even as we talk about NTE. Okay, still no callers. All right, guys. Well, you, you know what you, that usually means, Carolyn, because we have. I know. Of, no, I know what that usually means, Mike. <laughs> that, that means they want us to just keep talking. Yeah. And uh, Lord knows, you and I can do that. We so, can do that. Um, you know, I, uh, I I called uh, Guy McPherson and I spoke to him, and he acknowledged to having had uh, a very difficult time recently, a passage that he went through, mm -hmm. and he was really gratified just to be aware that there were others of us out here who were having and sharing the same experience. And uh, so now we're down to the point where we we talk about we have to talk some down and dirty stuff here. We have to talk about hard stuff like. Yeah, okay, what's it like to feel terrified? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, o okay, what do you do when you feel it? Uh, but more importantly, how do you incorporate it? How do you make it make sense? Well, I mean, how how would you not make it make sense when you understand what's going on on the planet? You know, we are probably standing on the threshold of near-term extinction. We've got 200 of our brother and sister species dying every day. Um, we're going to have the end of ice in the Arctic by the end of 2015, and when the ice goes away, the methane goes crazy. Um, so, you know, and this afternoon we had yet another shooting in this psycho nation. Somebody took out three people in Jewish centers and was screaming Heil Hitler as they were taken away by the cops. Um, you know, why would we not be terrified? And so, as Mimi and I were talking about earlier, using these tools, of uh, gratitude, of meditation, going out and getting really deeply, intimately in touch with nature, um, and doing everything we can to care for ourselves and then reaching out to other people. I think that may be the, the most important thing. It certainly proved to be important for me this week. Yes. Uh, because uh, you know, when I was in Seattle and, and I was in this breakfast room and I got these screens blaring at me, 22 people stabbed here, mm -hmm. you know, hit and run driver there, daycare, blah blah. Uh, it it was a a a feeling of drowning. Yes. Uh, and and a feeling of oh my God, I need to touch something else or the consciousness of something else that is aware of this and i i still come back to my my fundamental belief that's been growing over the last months that more and more and more people i would i would think that there might even be 2 billion people on this planet who are feeling the same way i watched seattle airport and everybody i don't know that they're all awake but i but but i could see that everybody looked miserable and i wasn't projecting myself i did some reality checks you know to to, to make sure i wasn't projecting my own uh, feelings onto everybody. Um, there's a leadenness out there in mm -hmm. the world right now mm -hmm. that weighs on, uh, on us like a blanket. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and, and uh, it's, you know, so, <coughs> excuse me, what's important for us who have experience in these ways is to share that experience, uh, again, for the purpose of people not feeling alone, but also so that we might discover something in the interaction. Yeah, and I really want to underscore what Mimi said about sometimes you need to take a break from the Internet. Um, I have so many people who come to me for life coaching who, you know, they say, you know, I find myself online all the time, you know, and I'm trying to validate, validate, validate what I know, you know, and so they, they're just like addicted to being online and going to all these different sites because they don't have people to talk to, uh, you know, and they feel so alone and crazy with what they know. And so I really encourage people to do whatever it takes to create community, uh, if, if not 
if they can't do it locally, then at least in comment sections online where they can form okay. some relationships with people. We have a caller. We, we have a caller, Ed. I don't know where you are, Ed, but Ed, if you're there, welcome to the Lifeboat Hour. Tell us what part of the world you're in. I'm <laughs> in Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> I, know I know that part of the world. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm not actually sure sometimes what part of the what part of the, if I'm on this planet or somewhere else. Um, right. But I just wanted to to mention because I know that you've mentioned his name before, Michael uh, Greg Braden, yep. um, and because we're all connected in this thing, you know, I I. I hear it all the time, the hospice of life. I know, Carol, you've mentioned it several times. We're in the hospice of life. I think it's important to prepare for um, that possibility, and all the evidence points to us being extinct. But I also think that we should also um, leave room for prayer that mm -hmm. maybe if we all prayed, and I think the solution is AA, which I'm part of, um, that maybe we can, and I think we are changing our consciousness, it's just that it hasn't gotten to the leaders in power, but I see so much consciousness awareness. I mean, the very fact that you're having this show tonight, the very fact that Progressive Radio Network exists and all these other websites, I mean, I've gone to EnviroReporter.com and, you know, I've checked all the radiation and, and I know what, I'm aware of everything that's going on. And believe me, I've had to cry several times because of my part in it. Anytime I've eaten a piece of meat or I've gotten into a car and turned on the, the gas, I'm part of it. So I really can't blame the people in power. Um, I'm vegetarian now, and I do as little driving as possible. But I can't blame the people in power without having to take a look at my own footprint. And every thought of rage I've had about these politicians and what they've gotten away with, I have to take a look at my anger. I have to take a look at that, and then I have to go into forgiveness, um, and I, I go into redemption. And it's about what's my part in it, and that's kind of where I'm at, is I have to take a look, a real hard look at that, is what's my part in okay, um, this. Okay, Ed, let me offer just, just one thought, and then we'll ask uh, Carolyn to comment. You said that this, this change of consciousness hasn't reached the people in power. I want to emphasize and say very, very clearly that's the wrong approach. We have no object to make it reach the, the people in power. That's affirming a dominator hierarchical uh, uh, meme, and, and and that's not good. It, this change of consciousness needs to reach all human beings, and the people in power will become irrelevant, and that's the point. Carolyn? Yes. Um, I want to suggest something. Um, you know, there's this in our in our. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, in our binary culture in our either or culture um, it is very easy for us to have this belief that oh if i prepare for hospice i won't be praying i won't be working for something different i'll just be uh, as i say in the article that i just posted today online about this i'll just be putting on my favorite pair of pajamas taking my ambien drawing the curtains getting into the electric blanket and going comatose and that's not what preparing for hospice is about. Uh, okay. I recently wrote an article a few months back called Hospice is a Busy Place. There is much, much work to do. And for me, it's about preparing for hospice and praying and holding in my heart and body the vision of what is possible, even if it never happens, especially because it might not happen. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does. But I do have a, a question, um, and I think, um, Michael, you talked about this um, maybe a couple of years ago. Was, it not, was there a war averted um, some years ago against Iran because there was a mass prayer on the Internet? But there have been many instances, and Greg Braden talks about this at some length, and, and it's very well documented. I don't believe it was a war with Iran that was averted. But uh, during se several periods of intense conflict, uh, there has it's been absolutely demonstrated that meditation reduced 
crime rates when it was practiced in a specific right. city. Right. Uh, and and uh, Braden documented clearly that uh, during the attacks of 9-11, the electromagnetic field of the Earth changed as a result of shifts in human consciousness. Yes. Right. We've got two more callers, so I want to move. I, w I want to make sure we get some time. Very much. Ed, thank Thanks, you Ed. so much. Okay. Thanks. We have uh, Cindy from Washington. You've been patient. Are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear Hi. Me? Hi, Cindy. Yes. Hi, hi. Um, I just wanted to echo and thank both of you for this particular subject right now because, Mike, I can identify totally that breathtaking feeling of apprehension that just comes over you like a wave. And um, and I've been getting that lately, and I'm like, what did I forget? What, you know, yes. what? Is it that's that's really precipitating this? And Carolyn, boy, did you hit the nail on the head? I talked myself down literally by saying everything's okay in this moment, right now, and I'm not going to worry about the next five minutes or tomorrow. Everything's okay right, right now. Right. That sometimes is all we have, and that's really a good way to go. Yes, that's it is. right. That's yes. right. Thanks again, you guys. Thank You're really you. special. Thank you, Cindy. We got another caller. Number is one eight 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 seven four four eight eight eight. Lisa from Colorado, are you there? Yes. Hi. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing good. Hi, Carolyn. It's Lisa from up the hill. Hey. Hi. How you doing? How's everything in Brick? It's snowing. We've probably got about a foot of snow coming down tonight, okay. so <laughs> I'm hunkering in. <laughs> All right. But I did kind of want to affirm that feeling of, um, I think, you know, I, I'm just taking, I just left a job at a mental health center at the front desk, and, you know, people are just reacting all over the place to that collective vibration and panic. And just being out of there, I feel like I'm detoxing. My body hurts, and it's been interesting to be out of that realm right now and just watching people react and not know what they're reacting to and want a pill to stop it and um and so michael i can understand that panic coming over you because i used to see it every day multiple times a day and our emergency calls are up and um it's a collective time and i study astrology and do um counseling work as well and we are you know under some heavy heavy um influences right now Carolyn, you had mentioned something about some astrological events, which I do not dismiss anymore. I've just had uh, too much right. experience. Well, uh, Lisa might have about? something about this. Uh, tomorrow's kind of a big deal. We've got some interesting astrological things going on tomorrow. We've got a very important uh, full moon, I believe, this month, and then we've got a grand cross on Earth Day. Um, so mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of stuff happening up there in the heavens. Yes, and I think, you know, a lot of what we're seeing is a lot of reaction, and people just don't know what they're reacting to, just like the lady on the previous caller, just going, feeling that overwhelm all of a sudden, and, and sometimes I have to stop and ask myself, is this mine, or is this just a collective thing, and that yeah. kind of helps me get my center again, and, and just, again, be yeah. in that present moment. Really um, good question because, to ask yourself. Yeah. yeah. I ask myself that quite often, and that kind of helps settle so that I don't react. Yeah. Because just on the ground floor of a mental health clinic, it's definitely getting a little dicey out there. Oh, yeah. And we live in a pretty happy community. Mm -hmm. So, um as, yeah. as Terrence McKenna said, it's going to be a fire in a madhouse, and I, you know, I'm kind of convinced the fire is underway. Right. Yeah. I've seen, our, I know our um, calls have doubled from last year as far as um, suicide calls and, and things like that. So um, it's, I've been kind of tracking it and doing some research on the front lines, and it's definitely getting more dynamic. Right. Dynamic. There's a, there's, there's a polite word. Lisa, thank <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> thank you so much for calling in. We Thanks, appreciate Lisa. it. Sure. I'll be in touch soon. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, All right. There are uh, no more callers. So, Carolyn, it's back to you and me. Now we've had input from you, me, me Mimi German, the people I've talked to this week, and uh, three callers tonight. Uh, what, what do you draw from the, uh, from the information and, and where we've come talking tonight? 
Well, I certainly know that, that what we're saying resonates with people, and we need more of these kinds of conversations. Uh, we, you know, because, I mean, people are just so hungry for community and so hungry to be able to, to talk about these things. And we just need so much more of this. And I'm so grateful for this show that provides that, that opportunity. Yeah, I just really felt that, you know, we needed to talk about this. Because, yeah. And, and, and I'm hoping that, that, you know, people like, I think Guy's been reasonably open about some of the stuff, but people like Paul and, Paul Beckwith and Derek Jensen and, you know, those of us who are out here on the front lines who we see the names posted up here start to talk about this. I think Chris Hedges has, mm-hmm. to a certain extent, as, as he works his beautiful prose to describe the feelings that come. Right. But I think the greatest gift we give is by sh- showing our own selves. Uh, wasn't there... Isn't a transparency a fundamental aspect of love? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we have to be able, well, we have to be able to see each other, and the most beautiful gift we can give another person is to see them. You know, we all want to be seen, and sometimes we feel like, oh, no, I, you know, I don't want to be exposed, but mm-hmm. deep down we do want to be seen. And, you know, and while we're talking about being seen, I want to say that what comes up for me is not so much the terror, although it does, but what is coming up for me, and I'm so glad, is grief. Mm -hmm. You know, and today, as Andrew and I were talking about feelings and responses to what's going on, he said, how dare you not grieve? How dare people not grieve? Um, We had a person who was watching our taping, and we had several people, but one person, you know, afterwards uh, we asked them, "What, what did you you know how did you respond to this and they said well you know i'm i'm channeling the spirits and these are my guides and my guide said uh, humans are going to be okay and i mean this guy was totally cerebral there was not not any hint of feeling and 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 that just uh, you know i just thought where is the grief and the grief takes me and i know everybody else I've ever talked to about it, takes me into deep, deep joy eventually if I can go through the grief. Okay, now we have also heard, and we, I know I believe that when we are in a state of grieving, or as the Buddha might, you know, as, as Buddhists might, might put it, when we are in states of great pain or loss or suffering, we are actually releasing love into the world. Yes. Uh, Francis uh, Francis Weller talked about that. Yes. Why don't you talk about that for a minute? Well, you know, Francis talked about, and of course, this this he got from his African shaman, who is also uh, somebody that I admire greatly and have worked with, Maladoma Somme from West Africa. Um, you know, in that culture, those indigenous people believe that grief is a public and community necessity, and that when you don't grieve, you are withholding something from the community that needs to come out and bless everyone. And so they look at your tears as my blessing, my tears as your blessing, Uh, because when we go with that, it brings us together, it connects us on a very deep level, and it also invariably takes us to deepest joy. Okay, so grieving is a gift. Grieving is a gift to the world, to the immediate community, and to ourselves, and I think to the earth. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I think... I think all things hear and understand uh, when when we are sharing uh, uh, our pain and our awareness of the situation. Terence McKenna had a line uh, that said, "If we knew, if we could feel what we were doing to the world, we wouldn't do it." Absolutely. And Absolutely. and anybody who's trapped in the cerebral space is is in a place of not feeling, not apprehending uh, the actions that are taking place to destroy, to kill. Uh, everything uh, around us at an accelerating pace, and in that cerebral, t- uh, under that cerebral exterior, is tremendous pain and sorrow. Shadows. Yeah. Shadows. All right. Let's let's approach this from the standpoint of shadows. It seems. Uh, I'll take my shot at defining shadow, and then you can correct me. Uh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> it, it, 
uh, anytime human beings act out of a, a, a fundamental position of div- a division and fear, that I'm not going to get something that I want or that I lose something, going to lose something that I have, they are creating the shadow of that event happening. Mm-hmm. And the essence of human industrial civilization, <clears throat> since we uh, fell from grace, if you will, since the original sin, by the way, which was a sin of consciousness, mm-hmm. eating from the fruit of the tree of human knowledge. It was a free-thinking woman who said, no, bullshit, it's my consciousness. <laughs> I have the right to do this. And right. that was the first act of rebellion or revolution on the part of human beings. And it is also the one which the God Jehovah punished more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So our shadows now appear to be uh, out of the closet and very hungry and lurking over shoulders. And maybe one way of uh, de- describing these events is to, is is to say that we're feeling the shadows breathing down our neck. Oh, I think so. We're feeling the shadow of all the powers that be. And, you know, Jung said that 80% of the shadow is pure gold if we can work with it, if we can make it conscious, if we can bring it out. And, you know, he also talked about there's not only a dark shadow, there's a light shadow. So the shadow of industrial civilization is community. The shadow of separation is coming together and unifying. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there's a a bright shadow that wants to come out, and it is coming out in these amazing awakenings that people are having. And all of this makes me so much more grateful (coughs) for the people, (coughs) excuse me, that we've been talking about. Yes. Who are out here on the front lines. Uh, Because, you know, we, we are, we have been like the cutting edge of the blade. We've been taking... Uh, the brunt and 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 making some major inroads. Guy McPherson is is uh, is all over the place lately. He is. I mean, where isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I talked to him briefly yesterday, and it's it's really encouraging to see that kind of penetration. Yes, it uh, really and, really is. And you also are are, are having some serious penetration uh, what are you doing now you, you had an online webinar is that over what's coming up next and how can people find out more about what you're doing and being a service well they can always go to my website carolynbaker.net and they can look at my facebook pages um, we have created a a closed facebook page for the people that were in the webinar the webinar is over befriending the dark emotions it was a fabulous fabulous webinar and we've created a little online community as a result of it um, i'll probably be doing another one on the in the fall on sacred relationship in the time of uh, collapse and near-term extinction um, I just posted an article today on what it means to quote unquote do something about climate change uh, because I wanted to clarify you know the difference between doing something and and preparing for hospice and all these people who say well you're not really doing anything uh, I want to understand what that means and and doing something in terms of what most people think is doing something about climate change is relying on powers that be to do something. Yeah, that's that's it. And, and as soon as you do that, you've subconsciously affirmed the separation and the division. Absolutely. There's an authority outside myself that yep. has power and that's that's the trap. That's the hypnosis that Mimi was talking about so clearly. And any time you're in that uh, Any time you even catch yourself thinking a line like that, you, you, uh, those who are awake enough need to stop themselves and say, oh, hold it, that's the culture. Right. And, you know, the assumption is that, that these nations are going to come together and they're going to agree that cl- ch- climate change is actually happening. They're going to understand that the situation is so dire that we have to alter our living arrangements and they're going to sacrifice their economic security and industrial profits to reduce carbon emissions and blah de blah de blah you know. Well, I'm sorry, but that's waiting for Santa Claus. It ain't going to happen. And and the uh, tooth fairy, Carolyn. Yeah. We are we are running out of time. We're, we're down to the last minute. I have two great quotes, and then we'll uh, we'll sign off. Two uh, b- both quotes from uh, Terence McKenna. We are the custodians of the destiny of this planet. What a great line! We are the custodians mm-hmm. of the destiny of this planet. Yes. Not not some elected official. We are the custodians. Yes. 
Yes. And Terrence McKenna also said, if the artist cannot find the way, then the way cannot be found. Mm. It is Art is do, doing some amazing things lately. And, uh, and uh, that may be uh, the edge, you know, you, the, the wedge into consciousness that may spring something loose if we start seeing all kinds of new art spring up. Let's hope for that. It's very effective. Art Carolyn is- Baker, we, we are out of time. My, my dear friend, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. This was a very important show. Uh, wish you good luck. Wish, wish, wish Mimi good luck. Thank you to everybody you. who called, and uh, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll be back to do this again next week, and uh, and we'll call all angels in the meantime. Until then, this is Michael C. Rupert, Tracker of Truth, loving you, saying goodbye. We'll see you next week here on the Lifeboat Hour. Good night.